And today we are going to be talking about switching over and really diving into my business of wanting to switch over from just a regular traditional salon model of having retail into more of like a mini refillery. And who better than to talk to both of you about that because that's what you do. So I'm really excited um, to dive into this. Welcome to the Salon Owners Holistic Blueprint, your podcast for unlocking the secrets to a thriving salon business through holistic practices. I'm Jacqueline Rodriguez, your host. And join me each week as we explore wellness, sustainability, and business success. Everything from attracting conscious clients to adopting eco-friendly practices. We're going to cover it all to elevate your salon business. And today we are going to be talking about switching over and really diving into my business of wanting to switch over from just a regular traditional salon model of having retail into more of like a mini refillery. And who better than to talk to both of you about that, because that's what you do. So I'm really excited um, to dive into this. If you want to say hi and, you know, reintroduce yourselves again. Sure. I'm Kate. I'm the founder of Dip. We Our core business is uh, shampoo and conditioner bars uh, that are made to really replace those high-end um, shampoos and conditioners that are sold in plastic uh, bottles uh, like Oribe, Olaplex, Kevin Murphy, and that are fast to consume. So uh, Dip is kind of the antidote to those. And I'm Lindsay McCoy, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Plain Products, which is the other option when you're looking to get rid of plastic. You can go shampoo bars, or we provide uh, personal care and aluminum bottles, and then we take those bottles back and wash them. We fill them, and then we also provide bulk products to salons and refill shops around the country in either one gallon or three and a half gallon containers. And we also take those containers back and wash and reuse them. And for anyone that's like not in the manufacturing world, what Lindsay is doing is like a huge, huge deal. Like it's <laughs> the reason not a lot of people do it and or do it successfully the way Plain does is because it is such a a, a big undertaking. It's so lofty what she's yeah. doing. It's, I mean, it's funny because like it it's a pain, but I feel like it's such a in a weird way, like a female solution. Like it's just a little extra work. Mm -hmm. It's a little dirty, it's a little bit harder, but it's not like crazy rocket science. I mean, we're just like putting the extra effort in of like bringing it back and washing it and putting it out there in the world, which is, you know, just a kind of simple solution. But yeah, it is amazing how many people are like, I can't believe you're doing that. What do you mean you take them back? Like, um, it's funny how it breaks people's brains, but um, it just feels like, I mean, kind of just like a mom thing to do. Like, all right, I'm going to clean up that mess too. You know, come on, bring it on. <laughs> um, I love that. And I want to say this is one of the biggest reasons why as a salon owner and, uh, you know, we're completely holistic, clean and sustainable. I felt comfortable ordering from both of you because of the fact that you put in so much care into your products. And one of the biggest questions that I always get is, well, how do I know? Like, you know, everybody says something. It's all a bunch of like trendy, fun things. And we've talked about greenwashing before. Uh, how do you actually know? Well, this is how you know, right? You start doing some research and you look at the companies who are doing it and that actually care and that put in that extra little touch. It is all about a client experience and that type of experience, you really can't get anywhere else. So when I'm looking for like to, to switch over and have a mini refillery in my salon, I'm looking for products exactly like that. And that's one of the reasons I chose both of yours. Two things. One, I just want to say thank you not only for, for choosing us, but also for doing that extra step for a refillery, because that's a little bit harder as well. Uh, you know, just to go that extra step and then to educate your clients around what that means and the extra step of them bringing a bottle back or, or swapping out. I mean, I think, you know, both Kate and I are in the business of trying to get people to question the choices they've been trained to make in the last 20 years. 30 years and having a partner who's helping us like at the front lines every day do that 
makes it possible. Well, thank you. And I think that that's the difference, right? I, all three of us really care about that extra step because I, I too am, I always make it a little bit like that little extra step that yes, it might be a little bit more hard for me. And in that same breath, because I'm so passionate and dedicated to this bigger mission, it doesn't really seem like that big of a step. So I'm the person to be able to do it. And that's what I teach with, you know, the academy is like stepping into that role of a leader. As leaders, you tend to make those choices, even though a little, there might be a little harder or think, you know, people haven't done it yet. But it kind of comes more naturally and easier to us. So that's why I jump into these things. Because for me, I geek out on like getting all the pieces together and figuring it out. So I love that part. And I always say with dip and I'm sure with plain too, the the thing, it, our companies are not about shampoo and conditioner and hairspray. And it, it's the, what we're doing, what we're thinking, the way we think is outside of that. It's much bigger than the products that we make. And I know that uh, for me, I, you know, I've been in the beauty industry maybe 20 years. Um, and so I, I knew that for me, like hair is the most emo emotional thing. Like it's the way to get, it's like kind of that first step in when, when you're trying to get someone to care about plastic, right? You're like, you wear your hair every day. You want it to look good. You're a lot of people have felt very burned by buying sustainable products that don't work. And, you know, the, the, it's, it's hard to get people to change after they've had that experience the first time. And I know that I've tried plain products and I like, I love them so much. Um, it's they're, they're amazing. So like this, this, when someone talks to, I'm sure when they talk to you too, Lindsay, like when, when they're like, okay, what's your business about? You're like, it's, it's bigger, but I don't want to sound like that jerk that says like, what we're trying to do is like so big. Cause it sounds like it's driven by ego, but it's not, it's driven by like this heart and soul of like, like women to women recommending things and making changes that seem inconvenient at first. And that trust of like a friend or your stylist or your sister, like recommending something to you um, is just so different than kind of like this big, this big bubble of capitalism that is, that I think is like choking down brands like, like ours a little bit because there's so much misinformation. I don't think that I don't think the FTC is cracking down on TikTok ads the way it should, and the promises the, like a lot of these companies make. And so when endorse when an endorsement comes from someone like you who owns a salon who's done all of the homework, all of the research, it makes like the biggest difference in the world. And I'll just say, I think the other thing beyond going the extra mile, and one of the things that I have always respected so much about Kate is just the, the transparency and the honesty around the whole thing. Speaking about, you know, claims that people make, I mean, I think a lot of brands are like, we're perfect. We're the solution. We do all the things you need and it's all the, blah, 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 you know, that all the, everything, everything. And I think both Kate and I are pretty honest about like, that's not perfect. No. We're doing the best we can. We make choices where we have to. Here's the things that aren't great about it. You know, if you don't love this, try a shampoo bar. It, mm -hmm. You know, and I think that, honesty of there's always choices and every purchase that you make there's always trade-offs and here's what ours are is another piece to hopefully making you feel comfortable but you know also having that relationship with our buyers and the, the people who work with us of you know you know everything that you need to know and you can make the choices you need to make we're not pretending to be something that we're not we don't over promise. I actually think under promising and over delivering is a better, a better plan. Agreed. 100%. Yes. And that's, that's exactly what I'm talking about is I've had so many salon owners say, well, how do I know, right? We're doing the research, but how do we really know? This is how, you know, you get to see the true person behind the brand and if they are out there claiming that they are the solution to everything and that their products have no flaws, that's a red flag. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, something that we've got to start breaking down. We don't just look at the ads and trust the ads. And I don't really trust all of the, you know, like, buy this, I've used it, blah, 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 because there's so many, you know, it's all that user generated content, which some of them are genuine, 
but where do we know, right? Well, where do we don't we know. know. There, are, there are farms out there, and I'm sure you've seen this too, Lindsay. Like they approach me, they're like, hey, we have, you know, 4,000, an inventory of 4,000 out of work actors that are ready to promote your products. And you're like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I actually like don't do any of it. I, I don't do any of it at all. Like it's just these, and there's, I get approached by these types of companies very, very often. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Like it's, it's very enticing as a, just say like, not for myself, but I think as a brand owner to like, take the video content off of your plate and take like, and grow faster and all these kind of things that I think Shark Tank kind of like poisons us to think a business is about, you know, like, you know, grow, 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 scale, scale, scale. You have to get all these fake UGC users. But the reality is, is I don't think that they move the needle on sales. I think they overpromise and they're not regulated by the FTC. And then you have like this whole new issue of like, when that does get cracked down upon, you have this digital footprint of all of these inauthentic things that you have to sift through. Um, right now, I'm I'm perfectly happy, like not engaging in that kind of marketing, just because I, I, I see it everywhere. I don't trust it knowing what I know as a brand owner. And, and it actually frightens me for the future of those companies that use it. The, yeah. the hammer is going to come down at some point. It has to, because it's not genuine. And there is so many fake promises and everything. And this is the reason why we're going around and we don't know what to trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we're getting into kind of a different topic, but it doesn't matter. Like, let's roll with it. Um, <laughs> with this, going in and looking at all of the the TikToks and the um, Instagrams and all of that, I've seen some of these videos now. Have you noticed, like, even I'm questioning whether it's AI or not? Yeah, that's another thing. If it's not an AI person, it's AI scripted. Yeah. It's AI one or the other. Yeah, AI script it. I, I don't feel like. This episode is brought to you by the Green Beauty Community, a vibrant, exclusive platform dedicated to connecting individuals and brands who share a passion for sustainable beauty. They strive to inspire, educate, and empower each member to make informed choices that celebrate beauty while respecting our planet. Become a green beauty advocate by joining the community today. Help us transform the beauty industry. Get access to sustainable education, connect with sustainable brands, and learn more about eco-friendly practices. Click the link in the show notes to get your exclusive discount code today. So betrayed by, <laughs> but... And I'm looking at some of these ads and it's the person and I'm looking, I'm like, are they even blinking? Like, are they moving? It looks so weird. So in my videos, like this is so silly, but in my videos, I'm really trying hard to like move around so that I don't look <laughs> AI. <Generated. laughs> yeah. I just think that's like, it's kind of crazy, but this is what we're faced with when we're looking on ideas and how do we you know, who do we trust and what companies do we go with? Mm -hmm. This is what we're given. So like being able to break down and really know behind. And that's why in the Academy, I teach you like, go to the website, look deeper. Social media is not where you're going to find if they are truly the company for you. You've got to go deeper than that and look behind the scenes and what they're doing, because if they say that they are clean or sustainable or green, trust me when I say, if they truly are, they are screaming it from the rooftops. It's on their website. It's on their bio. It's on every single thing and they're breaking it down. Mm -hmm. And I think that they'll answer questions. I mean, I certainly have found, and I'm sure Kate too, you know, People ask and we do our best to answer and we, you know, talk to the manufacturer. And I think that there are a lot of brands who are like, oh, we can't tell you that's proprietary or, oh, you don't, you don't need to know or, or this or that, or just put up a, a smoke screen of words <laughs> that don't mean anything. And, you know, is you as a buyer, whether it's a salon, a consumer, whoever has a right to know what they're putting on their body. And I wouldn't trust any brand that wouldn't answer a question. Yeah. yeah, 
True. And, and Lindsay, you, do you manufacture your own? You manufacture your own, right? Yeah, uh, we have a manufacturer that we work with that does. Yeah. It, it yeah. Works. So, I mean, you're, you're very much entrenched in the manufacturing process. And so there's, there's a very different level of knowledge when you are in very involved in your company and what goes in everything uh, other than when you're, you're kind of like one or two steps removed from manufacturing. And I think that that's like a big difference between in both of our companies versus kind of, I, I would, I would say an employee of Redkin, just for example, like they're not really that, that intimately involved with manufacturing or ingredient choices. And I don't mean to pick on them because I do like their products, you know, so it's not, um, but it's just a different experience when you reach out. Oh, for sure. Because when you go to look at it, they're, they are knowledgeable on the marketing and the keywords. Mm -hmm. That's different than knowing the true ingredients and everything. And I had experiences over this you know, decade of creating the salon to be holistic. I had experience calling these companies and asking, well, what is this ingredient? Like your ingredients on the website say like, these are the top ones that are in them, but like, what are the rest? And when you get the runaround and everything, then you know, like, this is not truly what, they're not really standing behind what they're claiming. Mm -hmm. and I had companies like both of yours that break everything down and that makes it so much easier and also sets my, like my, my ease levels to know that I can make a choice to bring this on into the salon one because the product works okay and that was my biggest thing too is as a salon owner the products have to work and I had so many people burned like you said in the beginning Kate like that they the product did not work on them so they immediately thought okay clean organic is going to be crunchy granola not work like I might as well just use my you know home products and make my own things. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was a hard thing to get them to switch over to. But when I found companies that actually worked at the level that a salon needs it to work, that's phenomenal. I mean, that helps solve so many problems for me. That's amazing. And I, I think that you're, the change that you're trying to drive in the, in the industry is just so important and it's still so new. Like there's so much opportunity to still change. It's not like you're you're at the very beginning of this movement in salons. And that's like what, probably one of the coolest things. You guys are like pioneers in what you're trying to do. And I know you're probably like the same way Lindsay and I are met with resistance about our products in the beginning. I'm sure you're you're met with resistance from other salon owners being like, okay, I don't know about this. Like, I, I don't, I don't know whether this is like where I want to be, but when you kind of go through and, and, and look at like the website and see all the changes you guys are trying to make and what the reasoning and the rationale is behind it. I think, I think, and the fact that you're leading by example and bringing in products that you believe are safe and efficient, like that's, that's really like one of the most magical spots to be, you know? Thank you. Yeah. I, and that's why I, I teach about it, but also the reason behind me wanting to do that is, is that extra step like most of the salon owners are asking me, you know, why are you switching over? Like it is a little bit more work in the beginning, but also that's why I teach so that I take that part away from you. Like I've done the research, I've done the things here. Let me show you my systems. And the profitability is much higher mm -hmm. when you're looking at refills. Also, it's more than the profit. It's the interaction you have between your client it's different. Every salon owner is so worried about they're going to go on Amazon and buy it from here, or they're just going to walk into their grocery store and buy it from wherever they are because they don't have time to come to your salon. When you're doing a refillery and when you offer that type of level of service to your client, they want to come back to you because they're, they know that they're doing something great for the planet of not just recycling or throwing away their products, you know, the, the um, bottles, and they are able to interact with you more. So they come and they talk to you about things, they try new things. And it's just a, like, I'm at a loss for words of like, well, it's like a relationship as opposed to a transactional experience. And I think 
I mean, that's a little bit of what Kate and I are talking about as well is, you know, providing that level of transparency, answering the questions, taking the extra step. And I think customers appreciate, like you can just tell that it's not just completely transactional, that there's more going on. And I think when people feel that, especially in this day and age of AI and deep, you know, all that other stuff that's happening to have it like kind of an authentic experience with a salon, with a brand. I mean, it, I think it matters. And for, for a few years, we were stripped from all human interaction. And I think people are clamoring to get it back, right? We were like, there were, year, there were those years where we were just stuck at home, box dyeing our hair and like, then, you know, having to re-enter the universe but during those few years like that's when that's when like I think that digital life went so haywire and got the digital life got really high on itself I think and so like <laughs> and so like now we're returning we're returning and if people crave like like authentic business relationships right like I you know there's a guy that now sells bread that we didn't have like a bread maker before but now there's a guy in town that sells bread he also sells fried chicken but you know, I'm trying to go more, but like, I love, like, I love that I go there. He like makes sure that they have the one that we need, at, you know, and, and the one that like for my family. And that is like a different, that return to that kind of community-based business is it, I think it's starting to gain a lot more traction than the digital world that's high on itself is like trying to give it credit, you know? Oh, I 100% yeah. agree with that. Yeah. And I think, you know, anytime I'm talking to people who are trying to start a business or a small business, you know, I'm like, differentiate yourself, mm -hmm. provide that level of service, show that you care, take, you know, offer something to them. That's more than just running the credit card and handing something over. And that makes a difference. And that's the whole thing is that whole, just running the credit card and that level of service of like what we have come to expect where it's, fast paced, you're in and out. Here's a wall of shampoos. Yeah, sure. Pick this one or that one. And I got the next person coming in. Like, I don't have time to talk to you about why this product's better, what we're doing behind the scenes, you know, any of that, like that, that conversational piece sometimes is lost in the salon. And the main focus around a consultation is, okay, what, what are we doing with your hair? And like, what products am I going to sell you? Which I hate because I, I was right there where I was working in a top salon, great top salon, well-known. And the scene, like the talk behind the scenes from the managers down is all sell more retail, sell more retail, sell more retail. Why? I don't even have two seconds to talk to them about what they actually need. So this is the type of service that everyone is craving. And I'm seeing it more and more where we've got clients coming in. One, they find us specifically because we are focusing on holistic, clean, and sustainable. They are completely attracted to us. So we're bringing in a whole new level of clientele that want this. They want that interaction. And then being able to offer them that one up of a refillery where I'll be able to give them body soap and hand soap and different products that before, I mean, literally they're not, I mean, they might pick it up every once in a while there, but they're going to go somewhere else and get it. Um, that makes such a big difference. And it's how you actually start to become not only profitable, but impactful as a leader in your community. Yeah. And I think, I think there's something beautiful about the way that I think all three of us kind of approach business. Whereas like, I'd rather have fewer really engaged, happier customers than be the biggest shampoo bar brand in the world. You know, or the biggest, you don't want to be like a Tony and guy, right? Like you're not trying to be like, you know, like it just, you know, Lindsay's not trying to be like Orbe, like, or, you know, so, I mean, there is like this, this, niceness of being able to offer the best of the best like customer service like any any element of our business because of the way we run them and because we keep them localized and and small um I, i'm i'm excited for i think 2024 is going to bring back a lot of a lot of this other new kind of customer that is like fed up with the internet yeah 
Kate, you as I say, completely speak my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. When you try to be all things to all people, like you're, you're nothing to anyone. <laughs> and, you know, what you're saying, I mean, if you're saying, okay, here's who we want to serve. People who want to take an extra second to think about what they're buying, people who care about what they're putting on their body, people who care about what they're doing to the planet. Like, and those are the people that you want anyway. Like, I mean, if you're going to have somebody in your chair or somebody you're interacting with, like that's who you want to be hanging out with, not somebody that is just trying to dash in and out. And, you know, I, I listen to Kate talk about the emotionality of hair for like 15 seconds and I'm, I'm in, I'm like, <laughs> yes, she gets it. She obviously cares about her product. She's obviously spent years working on it and figuring it out. It matters to her. That's who I want to spend my money with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The feeling's mutual, my friend. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and that's I think the we did it. I think we, yeah, I think this was, we said it. Yes, exactly. So I, I just want to thank you again for just being open and honest and always bringing that realness to what we're doing, right? And that says and speaks volumes. So anyone who's listening and you're just even wondering like, what is all of this? Like reach out to us. Again, they both said it, they answer, right? I answer my Instagram and then we have the beauty advisor. So like if you're looking through and you're just, you wanna ask any question, get the beauty advisor, ask it any question after, you know, like we have all the information there and it's like having me in your back pocket where I can help you answer some of these things that are coming up for you as a salon owner who's trying to start to transition over. So me, or see us on the next episode and thank you so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in to the Salon Owner's Holistic Blueprint. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to follow and subscribe. Until next time, stay inspired, stay passionate, and keep thriving in the world of holistic beauty.